right, welcome everyone. This is the Art Deco Society of the Palm Beaches and we are presenting a free class today for all those who want to get to know me better. I'm Sharon Koskoff and it's Introduction to Mixed Media Collage. I'm a public arts instructor and today is October 12th, 2021. And today's class will be two hours, although a, a standard class is three hours. What I'd like you to all do right now is copy my text number because the second part of this uh, programming, uh, you'll be able to text me in pictures and share. So if it's not too much trouble, can everyone, it's a very easy number. Our area code is 561 in Delray Beach, Florida. And my number is 699-7899. All right, so either write it down or send me a text right now so you're already in. And uh, I would appreciate that. Okay, so let's see. Let's get jump right in. My website is bysharon.com. Easy thing to remember. And I am an author. I've written two books for Arcadia Publications. One as the Art Deco Society president uh, called Art Deco of the Palm Beaches, which is all about architecture. And mm -hmm. one called Murals of the Palm Beaches, which is public <laughs> art in Palm Beach County. In New York, I was a member of the Art Deco Society, and I worked on this program at the uh, Chrysler Building, and everything Art Deco is masculine, like the Eagle, and we're at the Chrysler Building here looking at the Empire State Building, the tallest building, and we see groups of threes in the Eagle, one, two, three, and see how it steps up? These are Art Deco elements, and this was done in June 1984. I then moved to Florida in 85, and I made this Jazzman Serograph, which is a silk screen, and it became the logo. And uh, ADSPB is Art Deco Society of the Palm Beaches. So it all started on a sewing machine. My father, Papa Ruby, owned a blouse factory, and he bought me this sewing machine. It's a shop machine, an industrial foot pedal machine. This is now on the second floor of my home. Uh, so you can see all the ceramics that I collect, all the Art Deco ceramics. And at age 14, my sister Cheryl, who's with us today from Palm Desert, California, uh, mm. got married and had a, uh, two young boys and uh, said, gee, let's paint a mural. And I'm like, okay. So I bought some black paint and some red paint and some masking tape. And I put masking tape all over the wall to make these straight lines, painted it in. And when I pulled off the tape, I had a crisp graphic looking uh, design and that was called super graphics. We, we, they were murals, but it was very popular in the 60s and 70s. We called it, uh, I have to keep letting people in. How do I get the people in? Here we go. Um, we called it super graphics, but they were large geometric murals. First thing I did was I went home and painted my own bedroom with a mural, again with the tape. And we call this stepping down, which is like a pyramid shape. And the pyramid is seen throughout in Art Deco. So we see stepping down and these, we would call these uh, perpendicular 90 degree angles. Uh, and these are parallel lines, right? Lines that have the same space between them. So then my sister got another apartment and now I painted another mural for her. Now I learned how to curve the lines, but masking tape does not curve. How do you do that? So what I did was I put a lot of masking tape on this whole area and with a mat knife, I cut it out on the curves. And we just discussed one, two, three groups of threes is an Art Deco and very good design. And Art Deco has these things called racing bands, racing stripes. And here again, we see it stepping down. And uh, Art Deco was about speed and you know fast society. So this was a lovely mural and it was the grays on terracotta. Well, I just love painting big murals at this point. I got my own apartment and I just love New York. So it was only natural that I painted the Empire State Building and the Chrysler Building. And uh, a mural doesn't have a lot of detail, a graphic mural, it has simplicity. And I love the rainbow 
And I was a sculpture major in college. Here's my sculptures and my coffee table. I built the furniture. And um, oddly enough, we did not think very much of the twin uh, towers in those days. Architecturally, they weren't really uh, that interesting. I went to Brooklyn College in 1970, actually to 75 where I continued my master's. And uh, it was my dream one day to be written up in the Brooklyn College magazine. And two years ago, they gave me a feature article I was very proud of. And uh, I submitted a picture of my book cover where I'm painting a mural in Lake Worth. So at that time, I was making a living drawing needlepoint. Again, my sister Cheryl uh, loved to do needlepoint and she got me involved and my first job was in a store on Kings Highway in Brooklyn. And then I went on and created New York Needlecraft. I love that alliteration. And I would just hand paint and hand draw these designs on canvas, which is a grid. And people would sew them and I was selling these wholesale to stores and custom designing anything you wanted. Till this day, people call me and I design needlepoint. So here someone sent me a picture of Obama. So of course here I put an American flag in the background. And um, what you do here is you write by Sharon, you sign it. And, uh, and this is a color chart of how many colors and how many threads you need to buy. I continued, uh, I mastered color theory by 1977 at the New York School for Interior Design. And this photo, we see warm colors of reds, oranges, and yellows, the color of fire. And before I said goodbye to New York, I love my mural, so I made a painting. Remember we said a painting, you could put all this detail, which you really wouldn't put in a mural. It would just be way too busy. And I took this canvas with me as a memory of my love of New York. But as you see, straight lines, geometry, all these things fall into Art Deco and uh, are very important to me. So the first thing you do when you come to Florida is you learn how to paint palm trees. When I lived <laughs> in New York, I never painted a palm tree. But, and why not make them purple, right? And why not put a cool tone, blues, greens, and purples are the cool colors. Why not make a cool colored border and purple palm trees against a warm sunset of reds, oranges, and yellows? So I went to work at the Armory Art Center teaching uh, children on Saturdays. I would paint murals full time, draw a needle point full time, and work on Saturdays for 15 years. And I would get the children involved in my large scale projects. So uh, here we were uh, painting a mural that was on Clematis Street. I don't know where that slide went, sorry. Um, then I went to work for Old School Square, which is nearby in Delray Beach for 18 years. And as many of you know, who live in this area, we're, we're having uh, some problems right now. Old School Square is being shut down by the city of Delray Beach. And uh, that is very sad and very, very crazy times that we live in. So I was teaching mixed media collage on Tuesday afternoons from 1 to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time online for the past year and a half with Zooming. And you know what? The Art Deco Society said, well, we'll sponsor you, Sharon Koskop, and we'll continue the Zooms. And that's where we are today. But we can have a large audience on Zoom, you can be anywhere, working in the safety of your home from COVID and getting my uh, expertise and love. So I'm known for really big stuff. I don't fool around. For 10 years, I designed these 14 foot tall puppets for one night for the city of Delray Beach for our first night parade. And they would be on wheels and people would bring them uh, through the streets of downtown Delray on West Atlantic, pass Old School Square to the De Delray Beach Tennis Center, just for one night, just for the New Year's Eve celebration. You could see the scale of how big they are and how much fun uh, they would be. Uh, and, and, and here like the, uh, uh, the Espanol groups would be walking with the Spanish Senorita puppet and all that kind of multicultural uh, rich heritage that we have here in Delray Beach. A lot of people don't know that in Pineapple Grove, I did the mosaic archway bases. And if you were to open this up, it's 28 linear feet of, of mosaic mural, which I designed and personally installed and glued and grouted in the hot summer. Mm -hmm. I'm known for the flower festival. You know, we can make art 
Mixed media means any medium, more than one medium. So here we built this big A-frame on both sides at Veterans Park on the Intracoastal Waterway in Delray in the year 2000 <laughs> and 2003. 15,000 flowers I had to order the right colors and we took children's designs and blew them up. But I really worked in a lot of schools. I'm really known for my public murals. I love color. There's my nephew, Ryan Kerner, helping me uh, paint this mural. I was a full idiot. Isn't that cool? Oh yeah, there he is with long hair. Pine Grove Elementary School. This, we just lost this mural, it's very sad. But it's a theme. The principal wanted a nonviolent mural. Well, that doesn't sound very good to me. That sounds very negative. So I said, how about a peaceful mural? So here we have all the animals, the biblical animals, where the lion and the lamb are together. Usually a lion eats a lamb. So peaceful mural with the peace and the dove and the rainbow, and of course, all my great colors. We've done 11 portables on Lake Ida Road. At the, uh, these are gone now. But you look at this, you might just see fish. I look at this, and I see the three levels of the Montessori school. They have three grades. So we have uh, the three fish, the two starfish, and the one angelfish. The three, two, one, where it's parent, teacher, student relationship, the three grades of relationship. So even though it's fish, there's <laughs> symbolism. This is what you need to put in your art, symbols. Atlantic High School, they wanted multiculturalism. So I went and said, well, let's go with hats and shoes to show all the different ethnicities around the world and the different roles that people play in life. And of course, bright colors. You know, realistic colors are good, but to me, I like to use my imagination. I like to use creativity. We just, Plumosa School of the Arts here in Delray Beach, we just did a, a big save, you know, the high water line, uh, uh, climate change, we're creating awareness. So with the students, um, we painted the earth and who will save the children are holding up the earth. Who is going to save, who's gonna stand up and save the planet if not our young children? Also Plumosa School of the Arts, we painted a mural and I put a canvas. I don't know if you can see a straight line here of canvas. Then we extended it because they were moving the following year. So we took the canvas and, and then brought it to this wall and then added more again. Can you, can you see the straight line? There's my Papa Ruby working with me. Um, he was my assistant for uh, 30 years and you'll see him time again. Here's another project at Plobosa School of the Arts. You know, murals are so big, the pictures just don't show it. We create an environment, one wall, the next wall, up the stairs, down the stairs, on the ceiling, wherever we want, we paint. And the last one we have at Plumosa School of the Arts, the first year that the new building was open, we got 600 handprints from the students and painted, this was the kindergarten level, the first grade, uh, second were the, you know, the roots and the flowers. The third grade started to build the uh, tree trunks. And the fifth and sixth, uh, the fourth and fifth graders that watch over the children were the trees and the shade. And we called it reaching each child's potential. On the other wall on the steps, I took all the uh, teachers and had them sign, uh, create an earth. And we signed the mural here. So we're always looking for symbolism. You might just look at this and go, oh, it's handprints. But these children could come back years and years later and walk over and go, those were my handprints in the school. Banyan Creek Elementary School, we learned about butterfly migration. At Old School Square, I worked backstage in the amphitheater and I did a project called the Open Door Project where I gathered 111 recycled doors. I could have gone to Home Depot and I bought the doors or asked them to donate it. But recycling, repurpose is so rewarding and saving the planet. So we worked backstage, this is backstage in the amphitheater if you've ever been to a concert at Old School Square. And um, here we, we put down drop claws and here everyone's working. In fact, there's mom, hi mom. 
Here's Sylvia Resnick, a, a very close friend of mine from Brooklyn who moved to Florida. Here's Sean Terrell. He carved his door. There's no limits. There's no rules. You express yourself when you make art. We just figure out how to do it, how to make it, how to make it better. Here's Mark Stevens, who is the maintenance uh, management of Old School Square. And I'm meeting with him on Monday in an effort to save Old School Square. I'm meeting with Mark Stevens on Monday. Here's my mom and dad at the opening and here's dad's door. Dad made a door of him painting. And this was, I can see on the back, because we paint front and back on the doors. On the back, it said, I can see light at the end of the tunnel. So the light wrapped around the door. And here we hung the 111 doors uh, right next door to City Hall on city property. <clears throat> and it, we hung them in a revolving door fashion so you could walk around them, see the fronts and the backs. And it was a great public exhibit. Uh, there's the carved mural and there's me. And here I am with Joe Gilly. He's the former director of Old School Square with Rick Lowe. This was a Rick Lowe project from Texas um, that got artists involved. There's Sharon. We don't know who this woman is <laughs> and Sean Terrell, but look how fabulous. This door had glass panes. <clears throat> so now, <clears throat> um, Old School Square, uh, I did many murals on the second floor. Sharon and I'd like to show you this retrospective we had uh, last year, this little video. Um, and this is a mural I did with gold metallic and markers. You can see it's like a watercolor effect, the mod 50s and 60s. Here's the squares for old school square. We had a cat exhibit. So those canvases, the mural would cover the entire wall, but I would just put up a little canvas to save it. And I have these rolled up in my closet. This was a kite exhibit we had at Old School Square. So instead of keep repainting and losing the, my murals, I was able to save some of it. This was a fluorescent uh, day glow mural that we painted with the Putnam Around Golf Course in Delray Beach. And this was one more canvas. We ran out of walls, so they put up a wall and I was able to wrap it around. You can see this is done with markers, Crayola markers. And I was able to wrap it around to look like a fish tank. So it was called a pop-up exhibit, and it was a retrospective of the actual canvases painted on the second floor in Old School Square over an eight-year period while I was teaching there. Fun stuff. And here, of course, I had a book signing. So in Delray Beach, I became the chairperson of the Public Art Advisory Board, the PAAB. Public Art Advisory Board, and we brought in John uh, Clement from Brooklyn and. He did the noodle uh, tubular sculpture on Federal Highway. So it's the gateway as you come up from Boca Raton and enter Delray Beach, you'll see this. And I'm so pro-children and children's art that I established a children's art program. So they would make a drawing, I love Delray. And then we had it blown up and there are about 20 bus shelters throughout downtown Delray that still exist. And this is the one right in front of Old School Square. So I got eight consecutive grants from the Cultural Council to paint murals, organize the community, involve everyone, meaning the, the site plan and review and appearance board and uh, getting donations from stores like Home Depot and uh, Lowe's. And uh, we painted historic murals of Delray. These were from the Delray Beach Historic Society, these images of the old train station the agriculture of Delray, this is the tomato crate man, and this is the, our beach pavilion. And it was called the Community Mural Project. They had over 100 volunteers and sponsors. And it was on the Love's Drug Building. What a cool name. Dr. Fred Love owned this building. Now notice we put a border. The building was a 50s building with this kind of 50s brick. So we want to incorporate the building and the mural together. It was Pineapple Grove, so we put the pineapples in. And of course, a little Art Deco for Sharon, right? A little Art Deco there uh, <laughs> uh, to, to geom geometry to, to bring in the Art Deco. So for me, murals, the most important thing, we're revitalizing a neighborhood. We're not, if you take, paint a beautiful neighborhood, 
if you paint a beautiful mural in a beautiful neighborhood, okay, that's nice. But it's really great when you can improve something. So look at this wall. This was on West Atlantic Avenue between 7th and 8th Avenues, right near Old School Square. And they have public phones that only drug dealers use. And the funny story is, you know, there was a law, oh, handicap, you had to lower the phone so someone in a wheelchair. So I called this handicapped drug dealer phone. I got all these things removed. And on the two walls opposite, we painted these lovely murals. One was mm. to show old Florida with, with people fishing and the Everglades, the alligators, and one to show the new downtown Delray with music and art and jazz and eating outdoors. And we, we picked this Van Gogh cafe scene. If you notice, both of them have murals, uh, borders, because borders are always good design. And the gladiolas, Delray Beach was known as the gladiola capital mm -hmm. uh, earlier on because we, we did a lot of agriculture of gladiolas. So we put in, you know, symbolic things. We also put in a garden. Why? To, to, to distract people from walking over and really, you know, maybe graffitiing it. But we've never had any tagging or, or, or destruction on a mural. Not ever. Why? The community paints it. The community loves it. You're beautifying a neighborhood. Nobody wants to destroy their neighborhood. People want to enjoy it. So Caro's Art Bar is in the south side of uh, Atlantic. And good friend of mine, he opened up this Caro's uh, Art Bar. It was used to be called Bishop's Plumbing. And he had uh, a mural painted here on the side by uh, um, uh, Micheletti's, Christos Micheletti's. And I met James and Lisa Quillian. They lived in an area called Osceola Park. And we started together. They said, you know, our alleys, we have alleys all over Delray. Our alleys are ugly. We want to clean them up. And on these fences, people's private fences, we want to get permission and hang up art. What do you think? I said, great. I'll get the artist. I'll be the art. I'll donate all the materials because I have all this, you know, I'm a public institutional mural artist. I have equipment. And they take care of the alley and I take care of the art. So I bring all this stuff at Kevro's. We gave us a location to paint. And artists painted on these panels. There's Lisa Quillian. And the, this is from the first one. We only had uh, 10 panels painted, but we had a big party. So it was one day we paint and one day we party and everyone in the neighborhood comes out. People put up new fences. You can see this is a brand new fence. People painted their fences. People cut the landscaping. And we have food and music. Uh, here's Christos who did the mural at Kevros. Here's Lisa and uh, here's Kevro. We got Steve Martell and Chuck Redim to play music at the party. And we made headlines. It started in 2011. We have been doing this for 10 years now. It's 2021, a decade of art in the alley. So then James Quillian, Mr. Q, they call him, he worked at Lake Worth Middle School at the time, and he said, can I do something with his garden club, the kids who come after school? So same thing. We did a project. We had the kids working in warm and cool colors, which you'll see. Uh, indoors, we painted the panels. And then I said, well, you know, let's paint the wall background. And this was the result. And you can see we worked in the warm and cool colors, warm being red, orange, and yellow, the colors of fire. And here she chose green, blues, and purples for the background. Uh, let's see, in another one, they might've chosen cool colors, but that's okay. Warm and cool is all good. So here's James clearing an alley. And at this point, we're really making headlines. Delray Beach neighbors battling blight by turning alleys into works of art. So we, we come again. So the painting day is a true artist happening. We have food and everyone comes and watches. You bring your family, your dogs. And you know, it's very serious. And you can be a professional artist or you can just try it for the first time. I'm here to help you and make sure everything goes smoothly and that we have all the right materials. 
Uh, here's Sharon Kurlicek, uh, a neighbor of mine who participates every year. And sometimes you can't get rid of these people. They work into the night because they, they want their art to be the best it can be. But only when they paint. Usually they might come back the next day, uh, touch up, but it's not that hard. One year, J James said, let's paint on garbage cans. And we called it Feed the Animals. So notice how everybody made the door to the, uh, uh, the, the garbage can with fun, like, feed me. <laughs> Here they all are. So we would have tours where the downtowner would come and drive people around to, at the party to show all the alleys. But here's all the garbage cans lined up. We did, we started giving things down called Heart in the Alley for Valentine's Day. Isn't that cool? Look at our parties, big party. And, and the newspaper comes all the time. There's my neighbor, uh, Jennifer and uh, Kate Austin and uh, Deb LaFogg, Sharon Palupka White. I think that's, uh, I'm not sure who that is. Two people entered the waiting room. So let's let them in, didn't at all. Hi there, whoever you are, we're working on Art in the Alley. And then one year, one of the artists painted the alley. So here's the alley and there's the fences. And that's the picture that I put in my book, Murals of the Palm Beaches, because how could you pick just one? So we, we, we picked hers because it actually was the alley. So here's paint day, getting covered in paint. Steve Browse working for Heart in the Alley with his hearts, his graphic designs. And uh, here's Tim Markin who passed away. We had. One of, you know, he's one of our family now, so we had a big memorial for him when he passed. But here he's doing the Queen of Hearts. So here it is, a day before Valentine's Day, and now we have to hang because the big party was uh, Valentine's Day. And this was the wall that James and Lisa selected. But I didn't think it looked very pretty, did it? It needed pressure cleaning. It needed something. So first thing I did was I brought my paint, and I painted the whole thing, a little grass and a little sky. The back of this wall actually had some graffiti at one point and the bank that owned the parking lot just wiped it out. I hate when they do that. When I went, I had that blue and, and the yellow paint from the other side, which also made green. And I painted a heart over it. See right here, the heart and uh, some greenery. And now it's pretty. You drive by uh, the parking lot, it doesn't look like an eyesore. We laid out the art. James hangs the art. Here's our queen of hearts while his friends watch. And here, look at this great shot. This is Jim Valentine. He came, it's right by uh, Rubba Dub Car Wash. So he got his car wash. Here's the car wash place. He drove in his car and with his sunglasses, we could saw the beautiful uh, there I am taking the picture. And there's your finished product. If you drove by today, that's what you'd see. So we really are improving neighborhoods with our art in the alley. Here we are with Mayor Shelley Petrola and uh, Commissioner Dave Katz and uh, James and Lisa Quillian and myself with the heart in the alley. And here's all the artists who are so proud of their work. And I even made, got it into Atlantic Avenue Magazine. Notice I did the jazz man again. I mean, it was a recurring theme for me now that he's kind of like my logo, a heart for art. So when you're creating the collage, you need to have like a concept. And symbolism is very good as you see how we create symbolism in music, uh, murals. It, symbolism could be in a sculpture, it could be in any art that you're making. So always try to make it personal. So we're gonna see some collages that I've made, not just murals. This is for Ranger Construction. We'll move that right there. Ranger Construction was a mixing in your golf course collage, three-dimensional. So they just gave me a pile of brochures from their 18 golf courses at the time throughout Palm Beach County. And how do I make that into art? So, First thing I did was I looked up all the maps of their golf courses, and this is a floor plan. You see the black, I this is a lake. I created a floor plan, and then I put foam, I raised it. So I cut out a piece of foam and made this a higher level. We'll see that a little bit later. But 
there's different levels. Then where the sand traps were, I dug into the foam and then like glitter where you put glue and then sprinkle glitter, I sprinkled sand for the sand traps. And then they gave me 18 golf balls. Now I could not lose them. These had the logos of each golf course. And I had to drill in the back and suspend them. We put an AstroTurf border. Can you see the green AstroTurf rug for the border? And then all of this got framed in a deep, what we call shadow box frame, where the glass is way in front of the art. This hangs in their headquarters. It's about three foot by four foot. It's a nice size piece, it's heavy. This is an eight foot square mural I did for uh, as public art for the city of West Palm Beach. It's called A Decade of Visual Art in Palm Beach County. So this is the Palm Beach County logo, which I did not design. But what makes it special? Well, I collect things. So you know how you get in the mail when someone has an art show, a postcard, you know, come to the opening. I have been collecting for 35 years in Florida, all the postcards. You sent me a postcard, it's in my file. So I cut out and collaged all the postcards. So if, if you mailed me one of these, uh, you know, at one time, your work is in this collage. Now notice here, the tree I kind of did in the brown tones, and then I did the more colorful colors in the leaves. I, I painted the sky. Uh, I, I was paid uh, handsomely by uh, Bob Montgomery, so we put his logo here. And the water... I got a list of Palm Beach County art teachers and every Palm Beach County art teacher's name is listed here. And I printed it on light blue paper and darker blue paper. So we, a decade of the visual artists is documented in this mural. And this traveled around for a year. This was in the airport. It was in old school square. It was in the public library it, for a month. It, it traveled around. And um, it was a, a great piece, a freestanding, like so you'd walk in and it would just be a freestanding. Uh, we took two four foot by eight foot uh, wood panels uh, for it to stand. So again, make your art personal. When my father died, a project came to me called Keys to the City. Here it is, Keys to the City, where they asked artists to paint on, I picked a grand piano, the biggest size they had, which made the front page of this paper. And I put the doves in for my father and I made an art deco border and heaven. I painted heaven because he's in heaven. And I cut out cardboard in the shape of keys and then added glitter and I glued it on. It's, it's a very good picture. You can clearly see that. Uh, I called it knocking on heaven's door, a tribute to Papa Ruby. And this is about uh, eight years ago. And here we are at the opening. So I dressed up like the jazz man. Of course, I put the jazz man on the piano. There's the three-dimensional keys that are glued on. And my geometric art deco border and uh, a huge project. But here I am enjoying the finished product. A year later, my mom passes. And someone sent me roses and I took a picture of them. And when I wanted to make this painting, it was for the Cultural Council 40th anniversary, and they called it the Ruby anniversary. 40 years, the color is Ruby. So they asked me to submit a Ruby painting. And I went, oh my God, my father's name is Ruby. <laughs> so I had a join. But how do you just make a red painting? So I put the heaven background. I took the flowers from my mother's memorial. And here I put a picture of my father painting one of the murals he helped me with. So you can now get a whole, it's not just flowers, the flowers are floating in heaven and he's painting this tribute to his wife. And I look at that every day, believe it or not, it's in my bathroom, my master bathroom. <laughs> so when my mom, admit this first, when my mom passed, she was in hospice, I get another email right then and there because I was saying, gee, I did this great piano for my papa. What am I going to do for, ma for mama, right? Well, I'm sitting in hospice and I get an email in the phone. And they say, recycle artwork show, also the Cultural Council, 
of Palm Beach County using VCR tapes. And I have millions of those in the house that are, I can reduce, reuse, and recycle. So I build this box. This is the back. I cut a piece of wood and you can see one, two, three, four, I, I think I used about 30 tapes. And I put these two here for strength. So it would be construction wise built strongly. You want to make your art to last. You want to make your art strong. I'm showing the back of a piece uh, with VCR tapes. Here's the front. You can see the, the drills that I drilled the wood in, the four screws. And my mother was a jello master mold maker. Every Thanksgiving, every Jewish holiday, every family, she would make this wonderful jello mold. And my friend once said to me, Why don't you take pictures? I had over 100 pictures of mom with different colored jellos. And, and, and that was kind of her essence. But when I was going to make it, my original thought was Cracker Jacks. I was singing her the Cracker Jack song in hospice, but that really didn't make sense to me at the time. She was known for jello. So because it's a recycle project, now after I drew that, I started hot gluing on individually plastic caps that I and my mom were recycling for years. I had them in a big bag out in the patio. And here's the finished project. I kind of made it architectural, very three-dimensional. And these were um, the coffee, the Folgers coffee uh, cups. And this is some other coffee cup. And here on the side, remember the VCR tapes was part of the project. I put mom with all the jello shots. And it kind of looks like a running negative film, right? And you could see how three-dimensional the caps became. And I said, it looks kind of looks like a city. On both sides, of course, are the, the jello shots. And we all know jello shots is like vodka shots, you know. Um, but in this case, they're photograph shots of mom and Papa Ruby in this one with the jello. And this now hangs for two years. Uh, for one month, it was at the Cultural Council. Two years, it was at the Resource Depot, which uh, highlights uh, recycled, uh, gives free cycled things to artists and teachers. And now it's, its final home is in my kitchen. So I also get to look at this every day. So now this is something I actually made last week. It had been on my mind that when mom was in hospice, I used to sing her, take me out to the ball game, take me out, you know, buy me some peanuts. And, and mom, like her final words were Cracker Jacks. And I was finally now, it's like seven years that I want to highlight these Cracker Jacks. She wasn't known for Cracker Jacks. It was just her final words. And if I just made a Cracker Jacks, what meaning would that have? But just a few weeks ago, I went to Miami. I don't know if any of you have heard about the Van Gogh show, the inter immersive photographs, light show, extravaganza. And I've always loved the bed, Van Gogh's bed. And these baseball cards say Cracker Jacks ball player cards. So this is 16 inches by 20 inches, which is very small for me. But I had a collage, the whole thing. I put foam here. This is three dimensional and the Cracker Jacks is also standing out with foam. But it didn't have like a baseball quality. How would anybody know about the song? So I put a baseball, the old baseball Cracker Jacks logo here. And I put these baseball images here. And it, as I was doing that, I said, well, why not put a picture of, of mom and dad wearing a baseball cap? And why not? It also relates to the VCR with where it had the pictures on the side. And this now proudly hangs right now, just hung it up a week ago, right near my kitchen. So when we make a collage, we don't usually make sketches. Collage is completely different than making a, a mural or a painting. Because you can draw a sketch, an exact sketch, and then make the painting or the mural to follow the sketch. But in a collage, you start off with all this stuff and you don't know where it's going to go. So that, that's what we're going to talk about today. Where do you start? How does it go? What do you do? So you hear you see this is the back of the collage. This is the headboard. 
see how it's real art and messy in the back. But I made this little two inch sketch, Cracker Jacks, Cracker Jacks, man. And originally I wanted an Art Deco border, but that kind of looked like a marquee. It didn't really look like a bed to me. So I changed it to the Van Gogh bed as that we saw. But this was a quick sketch. All right, we're getting real personal here now. This was my best friend growing up, Neil. Neil Seidman from Brooklyn. He was gay and these are the only pictures I kind of have of him. And he died of AIDS in 1985. But I had these pictures, me with him and this alone. And I wanted to make a collage uh, for a December 1st project that I was invited to join. December 1st is called World AIDS Day, where we celebrate, not celebrate, we mourn the people we have lost who are mostly artists, creative types. The, great, the gay world is, is, we lost so many great people um, to AIDS including my best friend. In fact, they started a movement calling it a day without art, where if you go into a museum, you'd walk in and they'd have a painting and then covered it with a black cloth to cover the art, to, to mourn a day without art. But I took those pictures that I had and I flipped them in my computer and I made them black and white and I flipped and I added the notice I cut me out because it was about my tribute to him, even though he died 30 years ago. And I put in the word December 1st. And then I created more layers. We're going to learn and talk about layers. But what happened was I just printed out one color from my printer. So I didn't have a lot of colored images or something, however it was. Oh, no, maybe I printed out color from the printer. And when I went to make copies, they came out black and white is what happened. So all the pictures were black and white in the background. I only had one sheet of color, it wasn't big enough. So I sliced it on the diagonal, right? And we see down, up, down, up, down, up. And it just creates these layers. Now you can see it, right? You don't even see the word first, but that's okay. We, you know, where it was going was go, oh, here's the, here's the first, December 1st is over here. It was really about creating art and movement and contrast where we contrasted the black and white versus the color, where we contrasted the, the vertical and horizontal rectangular images against these strips. So what the art is about is many things, but visually it has to be exciting. At the Armory Art Center where I worked, uh, this is the last page in my architectural book, Art Deco of the Palm Beaches, where I'm on the roof. This is a more current picture in the newspaper the historic Armory Arts Center building. And this is an old picture because it was built in 1939 as an armory. And when I wanted to make a collage at the armory, I started this thing called 50-50 auction where 50 artists make art in two hours and then they auction it off starting at $50. And we held it at the Armory Arts Center. So here I am, I'm wearing my keys to the cities, the piano t-shirt, okay? But here I am making the collage and here's the collage. Here you see the picture of me a little bit. Here's the uh, soldiers, here's the soldiers. When you're making art, no one, you know, my head can be upside down. It doesn't have to be straight, but it's balanced. Here's upside down on the upper left and right side up on the bottom right. Here's the word armory upside down on the left. Here it is on the upper right. Here's the words armory on the upper left. Here it is on, on the bottom right. So we try to create this balance. And again, contrast, black and white versus color. Personally, I always wish this was bigger, but when I printed it out from my computer, this was as large as I could make it. But I think uh, it would have looked a little better had it have been bigger. So composition is everything. No matter photography, painting, collage, Composition means where do I put it? So what is the difference between the scrapbooking composition and fine arts collage composition? That's the big question. So this is a project I did for the JCC, the Jewish Community Center in West Palm Beach. 
They had a project called 350 Years of Jewish History. Jewish history from 1654 to 2004, 350. And they asked me to make collages. Well, I only made 75. I was not going to make 350. I picked out from this extensive a list that they gave me. And I, I bought oak tag, you know, um, paper, uh, the, the big poster boards in red, white, and blue. And each one had a date. So this says 1654, 1664, 75. See, they, they all had a formula. They all had a title. And then it was left up to me. I had to research on the computer, print out designs, um, and make these collages. But these collages are scrapbooking. They're easy to read. I mean, you'll see groups of threes and groups of threes, but they're clear cut. Some are just cut rectangular. Um, some are cut what I call the cloud shape. Uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, this one, like uh, I didn't have a lot of information, so I just did a lot of stars, but I made one with yellow. Um, you know, I just had to be very creative. Every single one was different with information. They had this on display you know, it's a gigantic building on the 400 foot hallway. And um, it was very, very popular. And I couldn't make a mistake because it was red, white, blue, red, white, blue. I had to be very clear on my dates that <laughs> what I was doing. But this is scrapbooking. It's easy to read. It's saving things that are important. If it was tickets to a concert or something, it's scrapbooking. The most interesting I learned that's so much fun from that project, the 1938 Superman was created in Cleveland, okay? So, but I never knew this. Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster created the Superman logo that we all know, there it is. But he took it from a Jewish star. They took the inside of the Jewish star plus one of the triangles. And the Jewish star is the Superman logo. I think that's cool. Okay, here's another scrapbooking project. The Palm Beach Zoo commissioned me, I got money for this, 20 pages. I made a book with a cover. And here I'm going to share some pages with you. You can see the line down the middle. So it's an open book. Whoop, let's go back, please. Okay, so this one has color, but it's all the animals. Like they gave me a box of stuff. I had to sort it out. I had to figure out what am I gonna do with this mess? So again, they're animals and some color. And what I did was I cut the shape of the animal. This animal might been, have been on a big page. So if this llama is facing to the right, I put him here. This is facing, so these are going this way. The kangaroo is facing to the left. So he's on the, this side of the paper. I have the words. It's not great art. We know this, it's scrapbooking. So, and when I had to cut out words, I, I use what I call the cloud shape. It, it just works for me than just a lot of rectangles. Another page was all words. Whoop. Go back, go back. It was all words. So here I do the cloud. I, I, I might have a straight line at the bottom, just go around it and um, and we worked. Now, all of the pages, I have a black paper and then a white border. Let's go just back to see that. See, here's the black paper. So they all have one common theme that's holding them all together in this big book I made for them. Okay, so this is all words. This is all the Campbells were their big sponsors. I, I think they're the ones who paid for this. Um, so notice this is all re all squares and rectangles, although there's Mrs. Campbell. I guess I gave her a, a, a cutout. But notice they're on a diagonal. It creates a V. Uh, they're all different sizes, so they're kind of placed where the edges hit the end. Okay, that was the plan for this composition. Okay. So this is like, how do you work with rectangles? 
Okay, I could have overlapped them. I chose to leave a black border around them. Okay, here's another page. Each, every idea had to be completely different, right? So this is society pages. Um, so I created a family tree, which I drew with a gold marker. And then I cut them kind of cloud shaped and I overlap them. They're all overlapped and they're all branches. This is not a true family tree by any, you know, it's just a tree in a family tree style. Um, again, just given from the photos that were given to me and I filled it beyond because a real tree would go beyond the walls. So it, all the edges hit the end of the page again with the black. And then I, of course, the roots, I put society. They were the, from this shiny sheet. And, you know, when the donors attend a, a, a society at the Palm Beach Zoo, this is all still for the Palm Beach Zoo. So let's look at some student work in progress. Okay. So you're, you're all gonna get this fundamentals of art which we're gonna talk about. Wait, did I, wait, I think I lost that, sorry. Let's watch this video. Nope, let's watch the video. <laughs> there it goes. So I hope you're all free to take my class on online Tuesdays from one to 4 p.m. This is in progress, so don't judge any of these as finished. Here the student wanted to recycle an old painting. So she took an old painting, she put this tissue paper, uh, and she had these face pictures and these are just all different variations in how it developed. I don't even think we necessarily have the finished product. Here we're doing the Japanese thing where she, you have to do a lot of cutting uh, and preparation before you ever start gluing. And we're gonna see this change later, how it was corrected. But what fun, what great colors, what, what themes that you all come up with. Notice layers. We have layers where we're adding things. Each layer is where you add something. And when you add something, that layer has to work on its own without the previous layer. This looked a little scrapbooking, but we put a pink background and that kind of held it all together. Uh, this is for uh, Barbara. Uh, she does everything with lips. And we didn't talk about going off the canvas. You make a collage, it can go off the paper, off the canvas. It can be medieval. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go back. So everyone's gonna get, you know, paperwork from the class where we learn about the fundamentals of art. And this means all art, not only, of course, how we're gonna apply it to collage. So I say, we create a concept, we do research. Think personal is always the easiest. You might have, a, a, it might be something as simple as a favorite flower, but it should be, have meaning to you. If I ask you to paint fruit, that might not have any meaning to you. So you gather your elements and what is an element? It's any one object, shape, color, theme, image, one thing. So here's one element in this collage. It's not cut yet or anything. You, have, you know, it might turn out it's too big. If it's too big, you can e email it to me. I can shrink it and email it back to you and you print it out smaller. One of the benefits of Zooming, I can do anything in my computer with Adobe Photoshop. You send me something and I send it back to you. Uh, one student wanted a little sign with her name and I made a sign with her name and sent it back to her and she collaged it on. So we saw this in the video, okay? She had an old painting. She wanted to use that background. So these are really two elements, even though they're both tissue paper and round circles, one is black and one is white. So this is not one element, this is two elements. And really the way this should be worked is you would take all the white and place it in a composition. And technically you would be done. It needs to have balance. All the things we're gonna talk about, up and down and uh, high and low and contrast. 
Then after the white is worked out and stands alone, then you would come and add the black and overlap uh, and create a new composition. So in here, if you, whoop, sorry, here, um, I can actually do this right now, annotate. Watch this, I can draw, I'm going to draw in red and show you, see the letter she created here with, with the black? It's like an upside down Y. Okay, and now I will clear that. Oh, I'm gonna admit someone. Okay, I can clear that. And this is how we're gonna work the class. I'm gonna show you in red. Now let's look at here the white. So the white is going this way, it's going this way. Uh, well, it could be better the white, right? So this wasn't final, but it's just to show how we work together and how we improve work. I'm going to clear this, clear all drawings. I'm going to turn off the annotate and go to the next slide. Okay, uh, let's see if we can move this over. So here were her elements. She had an Art Deco lady's head. You can't tell what this is. It's some kind of architecture with a reflection in the water. And I have no idea what this is and I'm not sure if we used it. Okay. But look what happens when you start making art. These go up and these face down. And she put in these tiles to connect them to, to create the X. And the buildings are going sideways, which are creating an in and out, in and out, in and out. And then here we had a lot of black space. The black space is called the negative space. So she put some buildings here and some buildings here to also uh, relate and go in and out. Um, she contrasted the black with uh, a lot of black and white, and then she added the pinks, yellows, and purples. So this is pretty much the warm colors, not a lot of blues and greens, right? A lot of uh, uh, warm colors. Repetition and multiples. Okay, now I don't know what the element started in this, but I just love this. Look at these great colors of, these are cool colors, blues and greens and purples. Here they start to warm up with the reds, oranges, and yellows. Sorry about the phone ringing. So, Got to call you back. Busy. Okay. Um, repetition multiples. Use an element more than one time. Use a color more than one time. So here we have black and white contrasting the colors. We have scale, we have large and we have small, okay? We have uh, all kinds of ins and outs. We have circles, okay? And we have lines and growings and we, we'll, it's hard to say where we started or not, but I will tell you that she started with a gold background, which was actually a great color for this the, the yellows, because it was not a lot of yellows in there and it kind of makes the purples more purple. When you have opposite colors of purple and yellow, if you use the opposites, it makes it brighter. Group your small elements to make a single element. So we saw this picture in the video where she took all these Japanese uh, figurines and grouped them to make a bridge. And here's, here I'm showing the correction where I annotated it. Um, see this mountain went right into this mountain. It would be better if this mountain, in fact, I'll go back to annotate and I'll use blue. It would be better if this mountain came lower than this. So we have all triangles here. It would be better composition than this all just going into one space here. We will clear that. So here also we put birds. See the birds break the line. We like to break a line. Okay, that's very, very important. So she had two birds, uh, br one breaking the line. And here I corrected, you know, it was like, it wasn't level. It, was, you know, it needed to be from here to here. So we changed that. You know, sometimes the picture you send me is just crooked. Um, and that happens many often times, but it really, oh, and here I suggested maybe some fish in the water. And I said, one up, one up, one down, one up, one down. Okay, here's here a black background. That's your first layer. The second layer, 
she already took faces. You can see the lips, the eyes, the nose. And we're, uh, we're looking here at a collage where there's straight lines. She cut thick and thin. Okay, so we have not all the same, which is good. Uh, they could have been considered different elements, but uh, they're pretty much long strips of the face. But they were where the lips were at the bottom, you know, they weren't upside down or anything. And this is, she sent me this. And then I went with the annotate and I drew, well, now what's my next layer? You have so, first of all, this could be done. You could say, I love this, I'm done. But what could the next layer be? So I drew these lines. Well, the next comp, you know, to contrast could be opposite corners, or it could be this S or a snake, right? That would be great. It just could be diagonal. And I could draw you right now many more ideas that I have that would be great. It could just be something right in the middle, the plus sign. What good is it there? The, the, the plus sign, right? You could say there were flowers coming here. Could be. Clear that. Say uh, it, 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 it could be the X. So we, we learn about these compositions, I'll clear that. It could be that she does a circle in the middle of what, it depends what element she has or what she wants to use. But the, these are all the ways to contrast what you have. So I, I hope that's clear. Okay. Wait, one, I have to stop the annotate to go to the next picture. Okay. So balance your composition is the placement of these elements. And people who know me, and you've already heard me speaking for quite a while, you hear me say up, down, up, left, right, left, zigzag, which is stepping up and stepping down, triangles, upper left, bottom right, diagonals are the key. And, and we also do these alphabet letters, which kind of will, like, will tell you like, this looks like, whoop, go back. Um, this here's your V, right? Or it's almost like an M, or it's almost like an upside down W, okay? Uh, these are parallel lines with the flowers here, meet the flowers here. <clears throat> um, and of course the diagonals. Okay, here's your zigzag. In fact, let me go to annotate here. Here's your zigzag, your, your Z, right? You all see that. But what you don't, might not see, let's clear that one. What you might not see is, look how this black line in the back, that's very important. We look at everything makes, and it was up there too, it just got cut. See how you're making that S, that Z, you're, you're going left and right and this is great composition. Okay, uh, clear. Okay, let's go here, just a diagonal. You see that, uh, clear. And of course, we talked about groups of threes, one, two, three. Now notice this one is different. She's holding a different flower. So that, that makes it go this way. See, this is a gold flower and a gold emblem, but this one was red. Okay. So yeah, I could go on and on and on and on, but this is how we add layers. Now, on this one on the left here, you could say, I'm done. Or you could say, I still have more elements. I have three. You know, whatever they might be, there's something three dimensional, something a different color. Again, these are just warm colors. Maybe uh, some greens or blues uh, would be beneficial. Maybe she just wants warm colors on the black and white. But I do love the contrast of the hard edge background with the feathery flower. That's contrast. How do we contrast? Here she started the painting on the right with the lions and tigers, a green background, because she had this mint green in these. Uh, lions and tigers, what do flowers have to do with tigers? Only the fact that they're put in this collage, right? We don't usually associate flowers, but they are kind of round and soft and watery and it works, okay? And neither of these are the finished pictures. Everything that we're showing you, uh, this is in progress student work. This is in progress. Look at this. She goes in great detail of collaging uh, pa Paisley backgrounds before starting. Uh, this artist doesn't paint the background. She, do she does a complete pattern on the background. And then she puts a big face. 
and then adds to the face. And you know, the eyes are the most important thing in any painting of a portrait or a, a, something living, an animal or a face. The eyes are always the most important thing. Anyway, so these are three dimensional leaves that you got in a craft shop or something. See how, whoop, go back. See how they make that Z, that S? Notice how it just hits the eye. Look how it just points to the eye. All these things matter. Again, this is totally not finished, but also the background is blues and greens, cool. And here's oranges, which is warm. All right, so that's where the contrast is coming in. Also, the leaves are pointy lines and the paisley are all curved lines. And of course, a face contrasts geometric design. Okay, so we talked about layers. What is a layer? A layer is you take the element and you only work with that one element. If you just take all your stuff and try to do it the first shot in a collage, it doesn't work. You just got like a, a, a mishmash. You need to balance. So this all started as, I don't know, a busy magazine, uh, this bottom layer. It was a magazine uh, article that was reproduced four times or several times and pasted. But wow, very cool, very busy contrasted with a very simple ge geographic, you know, uh, graphic uh, dice, black and white and all this busy color. This is bold and this is busy. But she was uh, placing these dice and it just wasn't working because it was just so busy. So we rested and on a new page, we took the dice and made sure they were because here's your zigzag, your pyramid. Made sure they were end to end lined up. See how the line, oh, the, uh, oh, annotate oh. that. See how the, the middle dots were lined up straight? And these were lined up straight. Okay. We will, let's clear that, turn that off. Wait, clear all drawings, turn that off. Okay. So the layer that we were going to overlap had to be balance. This is what I tell you, the layer. Let's look at the next picture. So here we took that layer and, and she placed it over this and that was great. It kind of framed this figure and it kind of highlighted the central dice that were somehow in there. But then we switched it and said, well, let's go a diamond. Oh, and we like that better. Now this kind of haloed this face figure. And it allowed these two also to stand out more. It was Dolce Cabana. And she, she didn't like that the lettering side uh, showed. And I said, hey, why not? Great. Or you could just uh, collage over it. You know, if you are going to have lettering show that everything is important, everything matters, everything counts. But look, but, but that, this is not the end, by the way, but, but you have so many choices of how to layer and contrast. Now this was very hard with these rectangular shapes and this is not glued down yet. This we were testing, but she painted the background in terracotta <clears throat> to match this painting. These are Modigliani heads. If you know the artist Modigliani heads, he's, he's an art deco artist uh, known for elongating the necks, right? Every, none of these are realistic. They hold this long elongated neck, which is called stylized which is an art deco element. And here's the artist himself, Modigliani, that she put in the middle. Okay, and then one, two, three, up, wait, down, up, down. She created a triangle. Okay, and, and we could have kept going. She could have kept going forever. She was kind of happy with this composition and then very carefully cut some things and glued it down, but it was the contrast of, of color. What happened? Sorry color versus the black and white by incorporating the artist himself. And she had had maybe hundreds. These are the ones she chose. And it was very important, right? If this one is facing left, you got to put it in the right corner. Um, all these things matter. And um, it really came out really great. Okay. You heard me talk about using the word break the line. 
we do this all the time in um, landscape. And I will, uh, let's see, in landscape, I will draw you a picture in landscape, okay? Here's a land, here's a, a square, and we have to decide the horizon line. It could be either right in the center, although that usually we don't do that. Usually we make a third high or a third low. But wh wherever you choose your horizon line, you want to break it with a palm tree. You want to break the line. Maybe, you know, even you put the moon there, okay? You know, you want to break the line. Okay, we're gonna clear that out. It's called breaking the line, right? Uh, clear, clear all drawings. Okay, so in this case, uh, this artist collected shells. And if you just put shells random, it doesn't work. You wanna group your shells. So she grouped them and made this S. And then she, uh, this was um, some kind of spongy coral. I don't know if she painted it green, but look at this fabulous wallpaper, not wallpaper, tissue paper she bought in one of the craft stores. Very expensive, but truly gorgeous, right? This background paper. And she painted the shells gold. And, and this, I'm not sure if it came this green, but it was, a. It, uh, let me annotate this. Um, you know, it's a big line here. So this black broke the line. And this, Green line broke the shell line, okay? Very important concept that I'm, I'm showing you. All these things, they're so simple. They're just rules. You would look at an artwork you make and you'd ask your question, did I break the line? You'd see you didn't and you'd go and do it. You wouldn't even need me. <laughs> Contrast, most important thing in all art, photography, uh, painting, contrast. So how do we do that? We've been talking about this all day already. Warm versus cool, dark versus light, color versus black and white, large versus small, words versus images. You can, torn versus cut. You can have, we do a lot of tearing uh, of, of images and that's fabulous. And sometimes you wanna contrast, cut the hard line versus the torn line. Straight versus wavy. We could go on and on and on and point out how to contrast. The most important thing, most exciting thing is color. Red is opposite of green, like red light, green light. Blue is the opposite of orange, which is very popular now. And we remember like the Dolphins football team. And yellow and purple, I tell people to think of Easter. So here's something where she went with the blues and oranges. The reason opposite colors, it's like black and white. They make things bright. So here she started with some kind of scratchy background, textured background. I'm not sure if it was paper or paint, but by putting these orange flowers is very bold and bright. Obviously this is a personal photo. Now see here she broke the line, but not enough, but we're gonna see how this develops. So she put some beads to, to make that picture a little more. Here, here see the flowers. Uh, broke the line more. Obviously, this is her dog. Um, <laughs> and she had all these fun things of glitter and these pom-poms. It looks like we probably, I will actually make it red. Th th these probably came and moved more and maybe there was even more come maybe here. You know, we want to repeat things. So maybe it would go like this, maybe like this, maybe it would even go like that. Um, I don't, I don't have the finished one of that, I will clear. Okay, but you can see how it got personal. Nope, it's gonna go back to clear, clear all drawings. Okay, um, you can see how it's personal and this has a lot of meaning to her, not to me, it has no meaning to me, but clearly a lot of meaning to her. This one butterfly in the bottom with the blue pom-pom, um, we're repeating blues and oranges as the theme. You've heard me talk already about diagonals, direction. Direction is the most important thing, diagonals. Let's look here. Well, here she is the, um, sorry, what was called? Um, okay. Oh, I just lost everything. Come back, Zoom. Shit. Go away. 
I am I'm doing a Zoom. Goodbye. I'll call you later. So sorry. It's an important call. <laughs> All right. How do I get it back? Zoom. Where's my, my whole screen? Ugh. Did I say that word? Back to meeting. Can't believe this stuff. Where's the meeting? We oh, hear you. Apologize to everyone. I can't find the meeting now. So we hear you, Sharon. I'm gonna stop share. We there can you see go. you and hear you. Okay, go back to share screen. Oh, I see what happened. Sorry. Okay, thank you. This person used red and green, which are opposites. Blue and orange, which are opposites. A black background. Now, here we see a strong diagonal. We see a lot of triangles. Everywhere I look, I see triangles. And let's look at the black background. We call that negative space. No one says you have to collage every single piece, but you have to look at the background, the, the negative space, the black. So here we see, you know, in, out, in, out, in, out. We see very interesting shapes. And this black shape here repeats this black shape here. This black shape here relates to this black shape here, right? It's background, but it's relevant. And it kind of spins. So there's an excitement to this piece. I can't tell what this is, to be honest. Um, but it doesn't matter. Uh, it, it has meaning to the artist and the contrast. So this is some kind of visual wing, this, some kind of flower. Maybe it's just abstract. Notice how this little triangle is formed here in black and the little triangle here. These little things matter. And so this touches the point and point. If you touch the edges on one side, you want to touch the edges of your canvas on this side. If it goes off the canvas, you want to go off the canvas on another side. And these are the little details that make good art. So it says here what you leave out, right? So it's not like what you put in, but it's what you leave out. And again, we could go off the canvas in mixed media collage. This was the art the artist was working on the whole, the whole time. And when it came time, I said, sometimes I want the art to be bigger or have a border or more impressive. So what we did was we, we put this square, actually, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go with blue. We put the square you know, on this black this way and it had a black border, Look, looked fine. But then I said, wait a minute, why don't we turn the art? And now we're creating a whole different dimension. And we like that made it bigger, more impressive. And again, mixed media art can be any shape doesn't necessarily go in a frame. So here we're going off the canvas, you might say, right? The back, although this was another canvas that we hot glued canvas number one onto canvas number two, the hot glue gun is fabulous. It's, it's your, your best friend in collage. Make a shape. Mixed media collage can be a sculpture. She had this mask at home and painted it out and then just went so much and glued all this stuff on it uh, and just had a, a ball. It does, you don't have to be working on a flat canvas or board or anything. You could recycle something, something you've had in the house forever. It could be a desk, a table, a, a stool, a pocketbook. And again, make it three dimensional. I just made this for the old school square, um, uh, has the eight by eight, six by six uh, auction where I took the Delray Beach LBGDQ Pride Streetscape mural that was, um, you might've read in the news, the streetscape mural that was uh, mutilated by a truck. A Trump truck <laughs> deliberately came over uh, and destroyed this mural. So I wanted to cause attention to that. So I took the picture of the mural and I cut out different pieces, but look what I did, I put foam behind it. So it's one level, two levels, three levels, and then the, the canvas itself, oddly enough, was two inches deep. And it had these rivets, which I painted silver. Um, so it's it, it, what we call these spacers, where you, you go out forward 
You can just go out or forward. But you know, have fun. Nothing has to be flat. So good art takes time. And when you put your effort into the artwork, it shows. So you're going to learn as you go. You can experiment, try new mediums, but have no fear in the art. The joyfulness will prevail. So my class, which starts next Tuesday, will be a six-week term. It's $40 a class times six is $240. You could drop in for one class, it's $50 for a drop in, just sign up for one, see if you like it. And you can go to artsdecopb.org or email me or call me, pay by credit card. And, and what I'd like to do now is share, talk to all of you, I'm gonna stop the share and you can all text me an image you're working on or what do I think of it or how can I make it better? Um, we're not here to criticize your work because there's really no uh, bad art. Uh, art just isn't finished yet, or it could be better. I have a painting in the house. You know, I look at it uh, two years later, I add one stroke or I take something out. You know, art is always changing, um, but I'm here to help you take your uh, personal impressions, dreams, and creative thoughts and make them better and exciting and things for you to be proud of. Um, and it's this is for any medium, you're working at home, just you have to have your own materials. So again, if uh, everyone at least take my cell phone number, but you could all text me a picture, let's share and see what you're working on. I'd love to see what you're working on and where you are. So I'm going to now stop the share and say hello to everybody. How many people do we have here today? Let's see, do I know? We have 19 participants, wonderful. Hi, Sharon. And um, you can now put your screen on, hi. You can put your Jeez. voice on now, we can all talk. Um, and again, sh if you send me an image, I'll, I'll share the screen. And um, look, at, I love that so many of your screen Pictures are your art already. <laughs> um, but way, way too much fun. And I missed you all. It's so good to see you all. Uh, re really is. Oh, and I've, I've just gotten my first text, which I was trying to mute the sound of the text. Let's see if I could do that. Okay, let's, let's try it. All right, I think I muted the texting sound. And I'm gonna to go to text and it's from Ann Newman. Okay, so I'm going to go to screen share. Wait, we're closing that. And we're going to go to Ann Newman. Can everyone see the screen, I hope? Okay, so she said two images. All right, so she's working on an Alice in Wonderland piece. Uh, great inspiration. Can you hear, can you talk, Anne? Yeah, um, actually it's- I, I, I don't hear your, your hold it. Um, I can hear you now. You can hear me now. Okay. Um, it started out as the original one because I thought with all the craziness going on politically, I wanted to do a We Are All Mad here. Mm -hmm. wow. Isn't that, see, now that's great personal symbolism and expression. It makes you feel better. Well, well you know, the rest of the world is crazy. <laughs> right. And sometimes I am too. But that's <laughs> the first one. And I had a lot of fun with it. It took forever, I have to say, not just because of the number of things there, but to find the images that I wanted and to flip them so that they some face yes. right, some face left, um, which took a little learning on my part, but I got it. And that was the first, and then I followed it with the second, which you have. Well, so let's talk about how great this is. I'm gonna do annotate, and I'm gonna go with the color green. There's not a lot of green in this, so you'll be able to see. Okay, so we have right away, we see we have a V. That we see right away. So that's great. Okay, clear that. Okay, so 
we have um, big Alice and small Alice, and Alice is contrasting, Alice is cut out in a shape, and it's contrasting the rectangles, the straight lines, which are stepping, very good, they're stepping. And I love this, you have this negative space here, it's an L on the left and an L on the right, yet here it's all shaped, it goes up and down and in and out. And the middle becomes the important, you know, it says drink me, okay? Because the word, remember, whatever words are on your canvas are very important in how you place them. And now she's pouring out crazy Alice's right into the middle. So it brings you down and back up around. You have the, the clock. Now, she had this lettering originally, we are all mad here, like on one thing. And, I, and, and, and instead, we, we separated the words, and then she put them up, down, up, down, you know, in, in, in a direction, what we call direction. And um, I would say that this is called primary colors, which are red, yellow, blue. So we have primary color scheme, okay, versus some neutrals and metallics of the background. And um, you know, there's so much to look at. Uh, here is the king of diamonds, yet here is the king of spades. Um, so we have all these kind of opposite things to look at and uh, really make a very good uh, collage, okay? And uh, people can make comments or not. Um, we use gloss medium, it's called Mod Podge. And that's how we glue it down. Uh, and it comes in matte and it comes in gloss. It's good to buy both, it's very cheap. It's, uh, not the expensive art brands. It's called Maj Podge. And I see here, well, this is a reflection of light from the photo, but here are the gloss where you sealed it, where you might have not painted the whole thing. So what we do at the end is we give one coat of gloss over the entire work and then holds it together and seals it. And then technically you could still keep adding on anytime you want uh, to a piece. Uh, all right, I'm going to turn off the annotate, clear, close that, we close that, and now let's look at, close that, and let's look at the other one. Okay, so Anne really got into this thing. <laughs> Whoa, look at the amount of research, and I bet you stayed up all night thinking and dreaming, I mean, about Alice. Oh my God, okay. Now we're developing what's called a series. When, when you're working on the same theme and more than one, you know, if you do three, you, you could submit these to shows and things. Um, but you kind of, you know, people are seeing who you are and look how it's really going off the canvas here. I love this. This is so much fun. Okay, so here, right, oh, right in the middle, dead centers, Tweedledee and Tweedledum in black and white. Where everything else comes color, here's some drawings. We have photographs and we have uh, drawings and just really, uh, now here, this is interesting. I'm gonna show this. I'm going to pick the color, or uh, green. Let's go with blue. No, let's go with green. Okay, you have this straight line here, but look, it's balanced by the straight line here. And when I mean straight line, it's of course a little wavy, but a big triangle, let's put it that way. Big triangle here and a big triangle here. And so it creates this V right away. Then we have this uh, red line here, it creates a diamond. Let's see, clear. Okay. Uh, and the hearts are the, here. We have one, two, three. Okay, so we have three hearts. All right, so the hearts kind of make me wish there was maybe one more here somewhere, but there's kind of one here. Um, no, another heart here. Okay, but, but as an element, if we were talking layers, and we just put the hearts on a page alone. You only have one, two, three kind of, you know what I mean? The balancing of these very bold red hearts could be a little better, but it's just so much fun to look at. Look at, well, here she's upside down. <laughs> you know, it really is so crazy. So, and I, this teacup, you did that, a great job. I, you really, really did very well. Um, so my, my only thought would be maybe those bold red hearts 
could be a little better. You know, maybe, like I said, maybe one just here and that would solve my, my problem here. I will. Uh, but, uh, you know, th these are only suggestions. Well, I may have to go back to annotate, clear all drawings. Okay. All right. Anybody else sending me some work to look at? Barbara, see, I have I a question you. next. I have a question if I can ask. Oh, yes, please. Um, my question is, I'm interested in doing small shadow boxes with work in front of it. Yeah. Uh, and I wanted to do some kind of a collage or mixed media inside the shadow box and they wouldn't really be very large scale. So do the rules change the smaller you get? No, however, small is just a little harder to work with. You know, you know if you're polishing your nails, is one thing if you're slapping on paint on a big canvas. You know what I'm saying? You just have to be a little more delicate. Uh, I don't know what your elements are. Are they three-dimensional, I imagine? Well, the, the item that's going in is sculptural, the, one, the item that's going into the box, but the background is what oh. I'm looking to create. So what you would do is you would measure exactly the back, the, the size, say it's like six inches square, and you mm -hmm. would get a board or a paper six inches square and create your collage and then glue it into the back of the shadow box and then put the, the uh, sculpture in front of it. Okay. And then so you might follow the same. And then as we go, process. there might be something that goes in front of the sculpture even. You know, so they're, they're, follow the same rule though, the opposites, you wanna do opposites, you wanna do ladders. You wanna do, well, it would be good to, to see what the sculpture is uh, to determine how to contrast that. If it's okay. a black sculpture, we don't want black in the background, you know, all black right. background. If it's a, if it's one color or multicolor, that depends. If it's a multicolor, you might want a black and white background. I mean, you know, we're jumping ahead. We don't jump ahead. We do one layer at a time. We try uh -huh. to do one layer at a time. So, right. um, but that's very doable and very exciting and very personal. It sounds okay. great. But um, you know, it, it's also a construction, so you'd have to build it and make sure you, it's, you, it's be, being built uh, to withstand, you know, uh, uh, being put together. Right. Right. You, know, you don't want the sculpture to fall. I don't know if the sculpture is even made out, but you'd have probably hot glue it into the shadow box and all that. Maybe you right. leave the shadow box open, but no one says you need a piece of glass in front of it or plexiglass. It could be open. Right, which is what it will be, actually. Well, really, and, and what the shadow box is doing is putting four four sides as right. opposed to coming out. You can still come out. Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the things I'm showing are going in reverse. They're jumping out. What you're doing is you're pushing in. But it, it, all the principles would apply. That's a great right. question. I See, you're all working on different things. That's what amazes me so much. Um, uh, we're gonna, uh, did I answer your question? You did, you did, thank you. Good, okay. By the way, anyone who's taken my class, it's Tuesdays from one to four, but all of my students text me over the weekend, not in the morning, you know, and have a question and we Zoom where we actually like Zooming right now. And, and we, we have little private talks, a half hour, 20 minutes. I'm here for you. You know, it just happens the class is one to four, but if you're working and you need, you know, uh, uh, update, I'm here. It's a pandemic and I uh, am very uh, staying at home. So I love talking about art and will help you all throughout the, the, the week, not just one to four on Tuesday. And, and that's good to mention. Um, and everyone knows how true that is. Um, so let, this is by Barbara Sims. And this is a piece she worked on. I, I guess she's finished. Um, wow, outer space, right? Um, yeah. And constellations. And clearly, this is your grandson? Granddaughter. Granddaughter. Oh, I can't see. Uh, granddaughter. And this, uh, what was this up here? He is um, the head of the space program. Wow. Wow. Isn't that great? Well, here's uh, another astronaut. OK, so look at that. You got one, two, three people. Wait. I'm, I'm, Wait, it just, okay. Let's go to annotate and let's look at what we have, even though with the green. So you have one figure, 
two figures, three figures, and then, oh, here's a little collage of, of the figures. Okay, so look, is there more here? Here's another one. Great, five groupings. Okay, so they kind of, look at that, they kind of move around. That's good, right? Because we know the S, your I, oh, here's more. Starts here. Look at that. You got the, the is there more uh, faces that I don't see? No. Mm, no, I don't think so. That creates the S that we talk about. Okay, clear. Okay. And you have big and yes. small and um, the glitter and, and these little balls. Now, these little balls, they, they work when they have connections. You just put a lot of little balls around, but you did it here with the blue. That's good. You know what I'm saying? Well, you, you're creating uh, movement. Okay, so this, these are your movements here. Um, but you see here, you, 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 might, you might even want to put a little more blue right there. This oh, okay. Do you, do you see that, everyone? Mm -hmm. it's, it's a little heavy there. Uh, you could even go there. You could even, you know, but, but it's good because it, it, it connects. Let me hit clip clear. Um, the, the Can you straighten it out? Laughing. What? Can you straighten it out? I could, but um, that would be in Photoshop. It would take me about two minutes. So I'm okay. I'm forget it. We'll do it next yeah. time. No, I'll yeah. do it personally for you and make okay. it perfect. Um, if I could demonstrate how I do that, would everyone like to see how I do that? I can certainly do that. That is not a problem. Um, that might be a good thing to do. Wait, let's do that. Okay, watch this. I'm gonna take this picture and move it over here. Are we she's still sharing screen? Everyone sees what I'm doing? Okay, I'm gonna open up Photoshop. I'm gonna hit open. Oh no, I'm gonna hit, sorry about that. Cancel, cancel. That's something wrong. Like cancel. I meant to hit new. Okay, so I'm going to take this picture and hit copy. Edit, copy, new custom. And I'm going to take your picture that does not look good now and hit paste. Okay, I'm gonna make it a little smaller to work with. All right, and now I'm going to take this and I'm going to do something called distort. Free distort. And what that lets me do is push, it's still transforming, sorry. Okay. Oh, no pixels. It's, um, you have to use the whole screen. Where did the layers go? Let's hit, try this again. Uh, image, distort, distort. Okay. We, but we pull that in that corner, we pull that into that corner. We pull that into that corner. Okay, now we have a picture. Okay. And now we're gonna hit crop. And now we're gonna hit save as. And we're gonna hit uh, planets. Planets. And we want to save this. Uh, well, in this case, we'll just save it as a JPEG. Okay, save. Now I can also, it won't really change your art. Go back here, what did I do? Go back here, I did something. Oh, preview, cancel. Okay, cancel, cancel, go away. I don't know. Wait, let's just. I, I have to hit. I have to cancel. Okay. I, now I can actually manipulate the colors and make it brighter or something. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Let's try that. Okay. 
image and go to adjustments. Now, I like to go to levels right away and make it darker, a little bit brighter. Okay. Wow, that did come alive, didn't it? Yes, it does. So what yeah. it shows me is you, 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 you sprinkle too much glitter here and not enough here, unless it's just ah, like ah, 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 got it, okay. Uh, it would have been better uh, if you planned the glitter more, but I love glitter and glitter's great and it's fine. I could still change it even more, auto tone. Let's see what that does. No, that didn't do anything. Um, but watch the here, let's make it vibrant. Whoa. Whoa, right? Look at that difference there. Black and white, vibrant. Vibrant. Saturation. Yeah. There's saturation. That's too much, but it's fun. That's too much, yeah. I know, it's but like it's fun. Cartoon. You know what? It's fun. We're not doing it, but... It's like a cartoon, actually. Right. Well, the thing is, now you can actually... Uh, what Barbara Sims did one time was... Uh, we, we, we... I have to crap. Um, sent this. We put her label with her name on it. And we sent it to Costco and they made a canvas of it. And she sent it to, to her uh, grandson. So she didn't send the actual claw. She has the original, the three-dimensional one. But Costco uh, for 60 bucks makes a canvas um, fabulous. And it's called the and G Clay. I won second prize. I won second prize. Wow. For so a G Clay is, is, is a print of your actual artwork. A uh, digital print that Costco and they, they make different sizes, but wow, isn't that fun? So we, unfortunately, the real I, mean, I don't know what it looks like in person, but but look how nice I can Photoshop this, and now you can use this in a brochure or, or on your website. Or I, I'm now Photoshopping this for you, which when we had class in school, I couldn't do that. I mean, I could do it at home, but mm -hmm. that's how, not how we were operating. So now the Zoom has tremendous. Uh, power. So I'm going to now hit close and we hit uh, save. Save. Let's just get out of this right now. And uh, so let's see, we're going to close this. We're still in screen share. I'm going to stop the screen share and go back. Is anybody else texting me? Yes, there was another text from Barbara Weinstein. Okay. Woo. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Barbara. Okay, so, uh, wow, isn't that fun? All right. So now I can't, okay, so this picture, this picture, um, this, we're still screen sharing, right? Okay, this yes. picture, you, you, you took, it's called a moving picture, uh, but that's okay. Is there another one below that? Let me see the one below it. Here, let's go with this one. Okay, same thing. Okay, so this picture, usually I tell you to take the art, put it on the floor and send it to me, even with the floor tile a little bit and I crop it out. So I don't know where the edges are or where it ends or is it going off the canvas? There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just explaining that, um, you, you, you sent me like the center part of the picture. No, nope. how did that get there? Where is the picture exactly? I don't see it. Oh so, oh, so we're not sharing the screen. Let me hit share screen again, sorry. So sorry. Here, here's the picture. I can put it on the floor. No, no, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm just making a point. You have taken a picture edge to edge. I know. I, I, I'm not the one cropping it, so I don't really know. Is, is there something there that's not balanced or balanced? Okay, no, but let's just look at what we got. Let's just look at it. Is there, we're sharing the screen and everyone can see what's going on? Yes. Okay, so let's talk about opposite colors first. So we have the reds and the greens, we know are opposite. And we kind of, even though just two greens are on the bottom, those green eyes, wait, let's hit the attitude. I'm gonna go with yellow because you know yellow. Okay, those green eyes, wait, clear. Those green eyes and these two green leaves create the triangle. Does everyone see that? Yes. There's only two green flowers there, those green eyes, it brings you right up like whoosh to see those green eyes. Okay, that's number one. Let's clear that and see what else we got. Okay, so to be honest, 
these we're going this way but it would be better if there was an up down up like like a red flower and uh, you know um this is a little too plus and minus there's nothing wrong with plus and minus do you see what i'm saying a plus sign is a plus sign there's nothing wrong with creating four quadrants it's not as exciting when it's on a diagonal or moves up and down okay so i so how do you so how, how would i let me clear this the way i would change that is either i would take these two away move one up here or one up here so it creates a diagonal or um you might you might even you know move them here or something but right 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 now they're actually taking away from the eyes a little bit you know they, um so it could be better okay so let's look at the background it looks like you did painting on the background it looks like lipstick actually it was a picture that I did in abstract art that I didn't like, but I kept it so that I could okay. use it as a background for something in collage. Okay. Do you know what? I just think this is just too, too, too round, too, too balanced, too, you know, um, one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, it, it's, it's bigger than her eyes. Her eyes should be. Okay. It came it, out. I think you get it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to see it without it. it. Probably looks better. Okay, so now this this piece here, the background is the same color that off white. So it's kind of interesting because here you have strokes and here you have gemstones. So that that's interesting. Yeah, the only thing that I found distracting were these two very strong red. Okay. Pieces. Take does them out. Does I it look better to you right now? Yeah. I took it, it out. Take them out if you can. Also, yeah. I'm now, again, it, 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 I, it, I it was okay, but uh, but just we're trying to make things better. Now look at the yellow I put in. The yellow looks very nice in there, which is also the gold. Maybe try to get more gold in there. Did you see I have stones in there of gold? Yeah, but it's not yeah, but really coming up. Okay, uh, but. Let, let me clear this off. Yeah, you know, so I just see a little bit of gold. Um, maybe right. a big heavy chain or, to outline this. Okay. Shape that you have. You see, you, 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 look at that. Look what I'm doing here. Uh, if it was a chain or some kind of jewelry, you know what I mean? It would really. Right. Because really, they. Because yeah. your background became a frame and the frame became too heavy because this is kind of the frame is like larger in, in, than this middle piece. So watch. Here's another thing I'm going to do. Watch this. If I cropped if, if I cropped this whole thing and there was less border. You know, what I'm saying I'm just trying to show you. See, so all this stands out more in the background, you know, the border less. But how can I do that if it's a canvas? Well, you can't. So you have to make this bigger. You have to make th th this bigger. Okay. Can you do that? Because I yeah, I'm saying if you do it, but no, no, if you do it with the maybe you put the stones around it or have things come out of it. Look, if if I have some just something like this, uh See how I'm making it bigger? Mm -hmm. But with yellow, yellow is the, the contrasting color now to your greens right. and your reds. Yeah, that works. Look at that. If you do something, it could just be glitter with glue, or it could be, you know, stones or a chain or some. But, but look how the yellow makes everything bright. And now there's not so much uh, border. And, and all this becomes more important. Now, I see now you have words there. I. Those, I don't like those words really. You cut out a rectangle and stuck it on her forehead. It just really looks stuck on. And what, okay. is, what does it say? Night? Your night for dream. Yeah, so so that does, 
doesn't need to be on a forehead. That could be here, print it out bigger and, and, and put it here like a title. You, you know what I'm saying? It's just a rectangle stuck on her head. And everything else is so interesting and, and, and rich looking. And the, just cutting that, can you get that off? Uh-huh, I didn't, it's not glued on. Okay, again, if you like it, type it in your computer, print it out, you know, make it work with, with you know, with, with uh, you know, you cut it out, ignite, you know, the words, make, make it work with the piece, not just a rectangle with a straight line cut crooked. I, I, I've mentioned enough about that, you get it. Okay, so do we have another piece here to see? We have to hit clear and annotate. Clear that. Okay, we have to go back to annotate clear all drawings. Okay. Okay, now end that. Uh, somebody just sent, oh, oh, look at this. That's cool. So who is this? I don't know, oh, Sarah M. Hi, Sarah M. Where, where town do you live in? I live in Palm Beach. Beach County, I met you before. I wanted to take your class before the, you know, at one time, but oh. I'm still in my pajamas, so I don't want to show yeah, my face. Yeah, sure, no <laughs> problem. I just want, I just, oh, look at these very interesting, oh, you got good stuff here. Very nice. You have a lot of texture. Uh, you have, this is obviously you went to Hawaii. Uh, no, I did go to Hawaii, but oh. that is, I wanted to do something. My theme was to sort of make fun of the, you know, we all go on cruises. And yeah. so I did go to Hawaii with my, you know, I met my kids, but we never went on a cruise, but these are old vintage things, sort of a, it was like, I wanted to come up with sort of the, you know, the ironic of, of cruising. And so that was sort of my theme. And I've been stuck on this for a whole year. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm gonna fix you right up here. I'm gonna fix you right up. Which one would you rather me look at first? The, the first one or the second one? Oh, I think the second one, because the first one, uh, nothing has been stuck, you know, so the yeah. first one. Right. Okay. So over. let's look at this. The first thing that I'm seeing is when you're adding words yeah. and these black and white words, cartoons, to me, I would consider one element. So that yeah. element, you would decide, do I have them all cut, which they're not cut great, or do yeah. I want them all rounded? You know what I mean? Here you're just haphazardly trying to fit it in. So you're struggling. You, you, yeah. you, you see that right away? Like, like this one is okay, but let's see if it, I'm going to annotate this um, with green. This one, there's no reason why you couldn't have cut this a little better. Um, mm -hmm. and you, you go and do all the research, but then if you don't cut it good, Okay, or sometimes you just put a border around it with a, um, um, I, I sometimes I buy, it's called the gel, where you squeeze on t-shirts, it's like a tube, and you can squeeze mm -hmm. black out of it. If you just took that squeeze and, and put black around it, you'd get rid of those lines and mm -hmm. it would all look like all of the black, all of, well, let me go with black. Um, it was color, clear, mm -hmm. they're all drawn. Um, black would be the great color. You know, we just have a black outline and they would all connect, right. you know, in some way, <laughs> including down here. But then we, again, we have to think of the composition. Where are they being placed and what are they doing? But, but already they wouldn't bother me as much because they would all have an outline or, or something that's connecting them. You know what I mean? Now I don't notice that they're cut different. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, th this is good. It's breaking the space of the black line. Uh, and this black, what, what is this white here? No, I haven't put anything yet. It's unfinished. This piece is unfinished. I, okay. I, All right. So, right. So, these are, well, these are the problems. I can't see the whole thing of what's going on. Okay. But you have color versus black and white. This little thing here. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what it's doing there. This little Hawaii, you yeah. know, we, we could find a better place for that for sure. Um, 
but but this big V here, this is good. These, these parallel lines, these diagonals are good, and these are good. I'm not. I'm, I'm working in the wrong color. Okay. Uh, what the gingham has to do with it, I'm not sure. I'm just saying. I don't know. If you, I think something more romantic in the background because these are very cruise. You know, is luxury and romantic, and gingham is like you know country. Mm -hmm. So I, I wouldn't su suggest the gingham, although gingham it okay. might be great for some other piece. Right. Um, you know what I'm saying? But you right. can find a lot more cruise stuff. Like where's that mm -hmm. champagne and where's that wine and where's where's the sun and the, you know, you can money, you know, gambling. I, I, I don't know. You can find a lot more cruise stuff than gingham uh, mm -hmm. is what I would recommend. And what is this little, uh, what is that little, um, well, fir tree, anything? No, I was just trying to balance the colors and put things together. My okay. thing is, is well, I wanted it to make it funny. So, you know, all those all little kind of circles are sort of comical things that you do on the cruises, but they may not be there. I think they're all in the wrong spot, I agree. Well, the thing is, you might just want to use the comical things without the luxurious thing for the theme hmm. you can still you can okay. still contrast the black and white with other comical things in color or something um but another thing is you know you, you're not using multiples so right. multiples will help in your balance uh you know repetition but you do have you know uh you have, right. the, good, you have the good central going here but you know all of your red is right here you don't have any red if you had red up here and red here, that would be balanced. You know, so we have to balance the colors and the images and the sizes. I'm going to clear all this. Um, right. You know, on the first look, though, the, the food is very interesting. You, you have good direction, as I said, um, but uh, I, I find the the cartoons now. If you love these cartoons, I maybe they should have just been kept rectangular, better than cut not so good you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying they could have been in rectangular and then we could have worked with rectangles as a shape um that's another effort you could still if you've already cut them i mean i i would put them mm -hmm. in my computer and square them off and then you have squares again if you don't have them anymore um mm -hmm. and the other thing is <clears throat> you could cut out the squares the rectangles mount them on a little piece of black paper and just cut a little trim so they have a border and then work with that as an element. Yeah, maybe you're right. They, 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 um, you know, and, and maybe they go across the top in a straight line or we, 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 right. we deal with the lines. Um, but you do have, you have that good, you have this good thing that they're going around and the diagonal and the diagonal and then this diagonal. Yeah. Again, you have good direction. Okay, see how this little thing here is just like, what's it doing there? Um, um, uh, and, and this Hawaii. Uh, um, Hawaii. <laughs> maybe, maybe you should have more Hawaiian things like a hula, hula girl or something. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The, the theme can be more developed, being that it's not that personal where you went on Hawaii to Hawaii or anything. Um, but there's a lot of, you know, we have the internet and you just have to Google the right things. You, you, you give in a Hawaiian comic strip, Hawaiian clip art. These are the mm. words we look for, clip art, uh, images, and millions of things come up. Um, just amazing stuff. Mm. So, so um, do you understand all the things I'm saying? You feel? Yeah, I do. I just, I don't we know why. It, you know, we can whip this into shape here. Um, uh, not, not. I think I I started with vintage paper from an like a 1900, 1922 yeah, magazine. So keep going One, with that. I love it. Vintage is everyone. Vintage is in and, and, and happy. And so good. I wanted to keep the vintage paper, but then I started putting color in from other magazines right. to balance well, out. The right. So what you're gathering, you need to do more research. Because you know what you want. You want vintage. They put vintage. You, you know, it doesn't have to be vintage paper. There's vintage images online. Um, or mm. you can get a book and just make copies from a book. Um, okay. uh, 
but again, you know, uh, it just it, it does work. Again, kind of the main thing here that works for this whole thing is the annotate. Um, uh, annotate. The main the main good thing that you do have going here. Wait, annotate. Right. That's my I get the point. Okay, you got you have this strong line here and the long the line here. Um, yeah, you know, these lines are working. But again, this straight line right in the middle there, and this straight line, um, they they they're not adding to to it. Right. But um, again, you just have to have uh, more research. Yeah, I'm gonna get more. I'm gonna do more pictures or whatever. Like you said, I, it needs work. I just I had a problem with the words, and I think it shut me yeah, down. Yeah, the words, the words are hard. You want you kind of want these pictures to 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 tell the story without the words. Yeah, that's what people right. do. Right. So we're gonna go off. That's you. Anybody else? Send me some pictures of what you're working on. We have 19 people. Thank here. you. Send me a picture. Good teacher. <laughs> What time is it? I have no idea what time it is. It's uh, after three. Oh, three great. Right, right, on, right on task. Amazing. So if you'd like to be on my email list, you could just email me and say, put me on your list. If you are interested in, in the classes, you can call me or text me or, you know, uh, Sharon Del Rey at gmail.com. It can't be easier than that. Um, I have three websites. For, I have Art in the Alley. If you want to Paint with us. Uh, we're not doing Art in the Alley this year. It is official. Um, let me unstop the share. We are not doing Art in the Alley because we, we can't have a big party with 400 people outside with mm. COVID. It's just uh, not our thing just yet. But it's coming. It's all coming. So uh, Sharon Del Rey at Gmail, you will have my text number now. And um, and I'm even here to answer your questions, even if you don't take my class. So we're going to sign off for now. And thank you all for coming. Thank you, Sharon. Thank, thank, you. thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Yes. <laughs> I have to take your class because this, this project will never get finished. <laughs> thank you. No, this is true. <laughs> She's fabulous. Bye. It's addicting. <laughs> Thank you, Barbara. I know. I'm glad. I'm actually glad that we'll be doing maybe Zoom because driving for me, I live up, you know, near the gardens. It's a long drive sometimes. Yeah, with the track. yeah this is great. This is great. <laughs> I'll try it. I have never done a Zoom class on um, collage or anything. So I think well, I'll have to. You know, I've had people just sit in and they say, well, I just want to watch. And I go, oh, no, you go get a canvas now. Yeah, we have three hours. Go get your canvas. Go get your materials. And, and let's see what we could do. Getting started sometimes is the hardest part. Um, mm. And, or, you know, even if you didn't do your research yet, you get the canvas, you paint the background. Um, you, you know, it just gets you in the groove. And the next thing you know, you're working. Mm -hmm. Right. That's good. Okay. And, okay. Probably sign up. Thanks. Again, call me. Although I can't believe that girl called me twice during class. <laughs> I thought I had the phone turned off. I guess I did. So on the first class, do we want to get all our materials together, or are we sure. going to go through? Sure, we jump okay. right in. You know, okay. um, we jump right in, and uh, people who need some people are in the middle of something, and some people. Are just beginning. Uh, I'm gonna be there with you the whole time, and uh, I, I'll if you sign up for the class, I'll send you a materials list, and um, uh, you know, and the list of all the things to look for. So you have that. Oh, that goes in every email. The fundamentals of good art. So you always have that at your fingertips, and um, you can work large. You can work small. You know, whatever you are comfortable with. Um, right. I, li I like the idea that I can send you some clip art and then you can put it in the shape because my printer yeah. is kind of broken. God, well, you will need to print it out. Um, yeah. I'll have, I'll have but but if, you do it during the week, if you do it during the week, you just bring it to Office Depot if you don't have a printer. Right. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. 
If you live near me, I can print it out for you and you have to go pick it up. <laughs> right. Um, is the, so is the Delray, you know, Art Center, is it officially? Because I got an email saying they were officially closing. The school so, uh, is officially closed. The school. Okay. I, I'm going to meet on Monday about um, a 30 year retrospective in the museum. What they have in okay. mind or what they want to do. I imagine they're trying to get community support, but also say farewell because there doesn't look mm -hmm. like they're going to be continuing after February. Right. And that would include the museum, That's the amphitheater, cool. the field house, the Crest Theater, as well as the School of Creative Education. Five are they just gonna, Are they gonna just contract it to some other organization? Nobody knows. No one Nobody knows, knows the answer. The okay. building, the Crest Theater, right now is completely in the middle of a construction zone. There's scaffolding, oh. there's no carpeting, there's, the walls have been painted. Yeah. Um, it's, you cannot inhabit it at any level. Um, it's in the middle, they stopped construction in the middle. So the Crest Theater and the School of Arts, that building is permanently shut, uh, temporarily shut. Um, yeah. I don't know what they're doing at the museum. I guess they're gonna keep the museum open until February. I, I, and the amphitheater, a lot of uh, acts have uh, dropped out. I, no one knows what the plan is. Um, I, think, I think that the two, the mayor and the two commissioners know the plan, but we do right. not. Okay. But well, let's hope for the better. Yes, I, 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 I'm not going back uh, to the Boca Museum of Art or the Armory Arts. You know, the Art Echo Society is supplying the Zoom and uh, I'm grateful. And I, then I just said, let me open up to everyone under Eventbrite. And like I said, uh, um, one of the people here today are from uh, Canada. I mean, we can do this from anywhere now. So that's the plan. Oh, someone sent something. Let's see, share screen. And let's see what I got sent. Ooh, look at that. What is that? Who? Who is that from? Cheryl McDonald. Oh, look at that. Oh, cool. So green is the table, I'm assuming. Oh, look at, okay. So can everyone who's still here see the screen? Okay, look, we got up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. It looks like a box of something that was opened uh, with, with great things. We have uh, yellows and oranges with a warm contrasting the cool. And uh, we have um, this, the breaking of the line that we talk about. So use the line, the, the elbows break the line. And we have um, uh, uh, big and long versus, uh, you know, verticals versus horizontals and uh, great stuff. Now all the orange is heavy over here. So it would be good maybe to put a little orange, a little bit up there, but it wouldn't hurt to have a little more orange somewhere um, right over here. If, can you, can you hear me, Cheryl? Yeah. See, you know what I'm saying? Okay. If we, um, yeah, I'm going to put some orange right here for you. Like uh, just saying. Well, up on the light, the lighthouse light. It's yeah, got a bit of orange. Well, that, that, that would make the three. That would make the, well, you have a little there too, but I'm saying this whole bottom has no orange. So it, it would right. be good uh, to put a little, so it could be in this one or it just somewhere just to make it okay. go around and around. And of course this is the center, but then the orange would just take you around with that being the center. You know what I'm saying? This whole area is just a little minus orange. Um, but very, okay. very, I love the whole thing. It's just exciting. and. Oh, is there a word you. or your name or uh, is, oh, is this a person that you know or? Um, no, this was a uh, another collage group that the project was to open up, a, you know, a, a box, ah, a deconstructed yeah. box. See, and I, then, like, um, I like I like theme based learning where we say the project is open a box or the project is make a square or the project is a landscape. I like that, but it turned out my class, everyone was doing such different things that it didn't wind up theme based. But but, but theme based, if you want me to challenge you, I'll challenge you all day long. 
If you want to go there. Okay. <laughs> so any more questions? Anybody? My dog has been an angel. Too bad the phones are blowing. So any more questions? Okay. All right. So uh, we're going to hang up now. All right. Everybody's happy? Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Ciao. All right. And bye-bye. Bye. And meeting for all.